Hello YouTube and welcome back to the conservatory. So following on from the, the previous slightly shambolic video uh, we're going to do the head bearings today and uh, hopefully I'm a little bit more organised. So the first thing we need to do is obviously remove the old races then we're going to give everything a bit of a clean up and then I'll show you how to fit the new bearings and the new races. So let's start with taking these out. <laughs> The, the bearing races themselves are actually sat inside the head and they're a bit recessed and they're a bit of a pain to get out. There's not that much of the bearing that actually protrudes into the casting for you to get a drift onto. Now, you could use a normal punch, but they tend to be a bit too fat. So personally, I found the best thing to use is just this little bit of, I guess it's sort of six or seven mil diameter bar. And as you can see, it's a little bit bent. It's been used before but it seems to do the job. So, you put it in at a bit of an angle like so, and really, you want to start at the very front of the bearing. Now, it's very important when you're hammering out these bearings to make sure that you do it squarely. So what I tend to do is a good clout at the front, move round, one at the back, then if you can get to it, to the sides, which is proving a bit difficult, so we'll go back to the front. And I can feel that come out straight away. So, so that's, that's the bottom one out. And now we do the top one, which is exactly the same process. So one, two, three, and there's our, our top bearing removed. Before we can fit the new bearings you need to give all this area a damn good clean out especially if like me you've been doing a bit of grinding in this area where I've relieved all this so this area is likely to be full of grinding dust and accumulated grit over the years so I'm just going to give it a quick spray out with some, some cleaner car cleaner to hand but obviously any uh, any sort of debrief will do and we'll just get that all nice and clean it may take me a little while so uh, I'll speed this up So that's everything cleaned up and ready to accept the bearings um, but I need to pop out in the garage and get my bearing installation tool and while we're out there we'll actually uh, fit the, the bottom bearing to the stem because I need something a little bit more substantial than the, the little workbench that I've got in here. So to the garage. And now we need to get the bearings themselves ready to, to be fitted. Uh, and specifically we actually need to fit the the bottom bearing to the yoke so before we can do that we need to pack the bearings with grease and get them ready and like a lot of people turns out I've been doing it wrong for quite a few years um, and the reason I've been doing it wrong is like most people I've taken my my tub of just standard LM2 high melting point grease put my finger in and sort of smeared the grease around the outside hoping that some of it would work its way inside the bearing to lubricate between the cage, the rollers and the actual inner race. 
Well, there is a better and easier way of doing it. And that is, take a nice big dollop of grease, like that. Clean your hands, make sure your hands are clean. And rub the grease into the palm of your hand like that. Then, if you take your bearing, and what you want to do is push the bearing into the grease and try and scoop the grease up as you're doing it. And what that's doing is that's forcing the grease up between the outer cage, in between the rollers, and the, the inner race. Now it takes a little bit of time to do, but if you keep pushing, so the way you're doing it is you're pushing it down into the grease and then giving it a little scrape. And if you keep doing it, eventually what you should find as you work your way round is that the grease should start to appear there we are just now you can see it's just squeezing out the top of the bearing which indicates that we've got the whole thing packed like I said it's, it's a bit messy and it takes a bit of time but it is the only way ensuring that your bearing is fully packed. And there you can see the grease is actually oozing out between the rollers but more importantly it's all come out through the top of the bearing. So that bearing is now properly packed and ready to go. So just any excess grease, put it back in the tin. And then uh, we'll put this one to one side because it's the top brace. And I'm going to go and get the yoke and uh, we'll fit the bottom bearing. So here's my yoke and you may notice there's a bit of a white coating on it. And that's because the, this yoke has just spent the last day or so sat in the freezer to chill it down. So why have I chilled down the yoke? Well, obviously bearings are an interference fit. Um, and in an ideal world, you'd have a bearing press and you would actually just press the bearing into place using the bearing press. Unfortunately, I don't have a bearing press and the truth is I don't actually have space for one in my little garage. So we're actually going to hammer it into place using uh, some spacers and some drivers. So I've, I've wiped the yoke down to remove any moisture and obviously now that it's, it's cold, hopefully the, the stem of the yoke should have shrunk slightly to allow us a bit more room for fitting the bearing. But before we can fit the bearing, the first thing we need to fit is the oil seal, the bottom oil seal. Now, it's very, very easy to get carried away, start hammering the bearing on and forget to fit the oil seal. And yes, I have done it in the past. The problem with doing that is, once the bearing is on the stem, it's very, very difficult get the bearing off without actually damaging it so always always once you finish wiping the, the excess moisture off the yoke fit this little bugger first and he literally just slides on like that now take our bearing all greased up slide him on and eventually we'll come to the wider part of the stem where he seals. The important thing when fitting bearings is that you only only ever drive on the inner race here. You don't want to touch this outer race because it's very thin metal very easy to deform. So what I've got is I've, I've got a little spacer and this little spacer is just designed to make contact 
with the inner part of the bearing and it conveniently fits inside the, the fork seal driver that uh, we used earlier on. Unfortunately the fork seal driver isn't quite long enough so I've got another old fork leg that sits over the top and then all we're going to do is just gently hammer the bearing down keeping it square now what I'm doing is when I'm hitting this fork leg is I'm kind of imagining it's like a clock so just like when we removed the old bearings 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock and you can see that slowly but surely the bearing is going into place Wow, well that wasn't supposed to happen Let's try a different hammer and hopefully you can hear the tone will change once the bearing has reached the bottom so now our bearings all installed can still move freely and we haven't done any damage to the outer race or to the actual stem of the yoke itself. So I'm going to leave that now to warm up a bit and fully defrost and then we will head back in the conservatory and we'll get this fitted. Right so we're back from the garage, got the, the bottom yoke here with this bearing fitted and I've refitted the two aluminium lock stops that we made up in a previous video um, and we've got the installation tool. Now basically this is some 10mm studded bar and two turned aluminium bushes if you like for want of a better description and the idea is that uh, you put the bearing roughly into place or squarely into place Insert this tool and then you just tighten it down and it will squeeze the bearing, the bearing outer or the outer race into place. Now like the, um, the bottom bearing that we fitted to the, the bottom yoke, these have been sat in the freezer over for a day or so to cool down so I am just going to wipe off any excess water and ignore the fly that's buzzing around and then we're just going to apply a thin smear of grease just to help ease it into place so while I'm smearing grease around I'm just going to zoom you in and we shall start the zoom on this little camera is rubbish right so we just literally push it into place and with the rubber hammer we'll give it a little tap just to get it started and make sure in there square. You can see it's a little bit high that end. Now the, the material that these uh, bearing races are made from is pretty hard metal but always only ever use a rubber hammer and preferably aluminium faced pullers or 
to, to fit them because they're quite easily marked. And then the last thing you want to do is mark them because that will give you notchy bearings before you've even started. So tighten up our puller. Just a case, literally winding the bearing in. And as long as you start it off square, it should go in nice and easy. Now you can, if you haven't got one of these bearing pullers, people do use sockets. Um, and I've even seen where you, you cut down the old um, outer race with a Dremel to make a thin slit in it and use that. Um, I don't like any of those because it's all hard metal against equally hard metal. Um, hence why I'm, I knocked up this little, uh, little tool. Nice thing about this tool is Honda use pretty much the same size bearings in in all of their bikes, so uh, it works on all sorts. Once you've installed the bearing, just have a good look at it, make sure it looks square, and run your finger around underneath, try and get your fingernail in, see if there's any gaps where it can go. And now you've done the, the top bearing, do exactly the same for the bottom bearing which, uh, funnily enough, I've already done and forgot to turn the microphone on for that. <coughs> OK, so now we've got the, the top and the bottom races installed, we can start fitting the, the steering stem itself, fit the bottom yoke, as you can see with our greased up bearing, um, two stops, and our, our top bearing, which again has been nicely greased, so I'm just going to drop top bearing into place. Wipe a bit of grease off my hands. And then we'll feed the bottom yoke into place. Okay, so that's that in place. And then, just like the, the, the bottom bearing, there is this, this rubber washer, which I'm just going to fit on there. Just give it a quick smear with some grease, actually. retaining nut with the, the washer and it's this nut that actually dictates the tension that you're going to apply on the, the bearings. Now obviously we've replaced these with uh, a taper bearing set rather than the annular balls that Honda use as standard. There's no real advantage in using taper bearings over the annular balls it just seems to be that that's about all you can get from most aftermarket suppliers. So that's the only reason I've gone with a taper bearing set. I'm just going to tighten it up hand tight. Now in the manual they do actually give a torque figure for doing the head bearings. The problem is that torque figure applies to the annular ball bearing set up that Honda use as standard. You don't use quite so much torque 
on, on a taper roller bearing set. So all you can do is kind of go by feel really. And what you want is you want it to turn without too much drag. So I'm just going to tighten up a little bit more and then to seat everything and then back it all off. So you can see that's over tight, there is drag and, and it's really quite stiff to turn. So we just need to back that off a little bit until it becomes freely turning. But at the same time you don't want it too loose Again, that feels a little bit notchy, so it's still a bit tight. Now you can sort of feel the balls turning, but there's no real drag. And what you might find is after you've been riding the bike for a little while, these will bed in and may need retorking up again. Now we've got our bottom washer on fit the little locking ring and then the top washer and that needs to be tightened up just enough that the, the slots line up with the, the tabs that you bend up Sometimes if you over tighten it, which I've just done, what happens is it drags the bottom bearing or the bottom retainer with it, just like that, and you have to retalk that up again. It's just lined up. Take out a little bit of rod and then just punch up the, the locking tabs. process. Top yoke comes next. And then the top nut. Now I'm not going to tighten this top nut up to the specified torque because it's quite high until we've got the forks in. So I'm going to go and grab the forks grab the, the clip-ons because obviously we need those as well and the various nuts and bolts that hold everything together 
and we might as well fit the forks while we're at it. Okay, so I've moved the bike around a little bit just so you can get a better view. And uh, we've got the clip ons and we've got our, our bag of bolts and when we dismantled everything. So we're just going to quickly put the bolts in loosely so they're already in there for when we want to tighten them up. Because the last thing you want to be doing is trying to hold a fork leg with one hand whilst trying to reach across the workshop to get your bolts. Okay, so you need to fit the clip-ons, if you're using the stock ones, at the same time as you're fitting the, the fork legs. Now, they are handed, and they actually have these little nubs on the top. And you can see them just there. And these little nubs actually sit just inside here. Where, the, where you can see the bolt, and that's what stops them turning, as well as just the clamping force. So, let's start with the right hand leg. How do I know I've got the right hand leg? Well, the two pinch bolts face the front, and there's always this little casting which goes on the inside, and all the, the text. Also, this oil drain bolt that we talked about when uh, I dismantled the forks always goes on the inside towards the back. So if we can just push that up, drop our clip on in place, and then this is why I left the top yoke loose, so you can just manoeuvre everything into place. Now I'm just lightly gripping it with the, the bottom yoke because when I dismantled it I actually had these forks raised up above the yokes by 8mm. So I've got my vernier calipers and I'm just going to sit them on there and we should be able to ease the forks down Oops. until we get them. Eight millimeters. In the right place, knit them up. Again, double check our measurement. Then we can lift the clip on up and just make sure that that little nub engages in there just underneath the bolt. So that's a 12 mil. Now I like to ride with my clip-ons pushed as far out as possible. You can move them in a little bit if you're short if you're Japanese, but for most of us Europeans, we're going to want as much reach as we possibly can get. to on these but sensibly tight is good enough okay so that 
that uh, right hand fork leg in and do exactly the same again for the left hand side. Finally, now that we know that the top yoke is all square with the bottom yoke, we can torque this up and this has a massive uh, setting, which is 105 newton meters. yokes and forks fitted. This. At this rate we'll have it back on its wheels in no time. So thanks for watching and uh, until then I'll see you soon.